Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another New Week at Oxford. This morning, I've just been getting some stuff done around here. I actually finished editing tonight's video. But this week, today, I'm about to head out to the Rad Camp. I have a couple friends who have been there since, like, nine studying, but I was not going to be getting ready early enough to be there at, like, nine. So I'm joining them now a little bit later. Hopefully I'll be able to find a seat sort of near them. But yeah, that's kind of all that I have firmly planned for today. I'm sure we'll come up with something to do this evening. But yeah, so this week I'm working more on my essay. I'm kind of gearing up for it because it's due in the next couple of weeks. So that's what I'm going to be working on this week, but also getting up to some fun stuff because it is a break. I'm about to head out now to the rad cam and maybe grab something to eat on my walk there. And it should be a nice day. It's it's warm, but it looks a little like windy and overcast today, which is unfortunate because we did have some sunny weather last week, which is really, really nice. So hopefully we have some more again. We've talked about doing a picnic in one of the parks, so that would be something that would be really fun to do this week. So maybe that'll happen. I'm back. Um, so I had a good, pretty productive afternoon in the rad cam. Um, I don't know how, I mean Gaia said I don't know how you do it to Eloise, but I don't know how both of them do it. Because they were in there since like 10 and I left around like just after 5.30 because I was starving. And Eloise was going to stay there until like 7, 7.30. I think she only wound up staying about another hour because then she was like, I'm also hungry and burnt out so I'm going to come back as well but then she just came back here to study. And even when I do like all day sessions, I typically don't do them in the same library. So like we, we took breaks and walked around and everything, but I still just can't do that. I get too like antsy and fidgety. So if I'm doing like full library, full all day cram work day, I usually start in one library and then I'll maybe go to a different one and then I'll come home and do work here because I just like, I just can't do it. I get my brain eventually just shuts off and I need to go. And that was the point that I had reached. And also I was hungry. So I got Kokoro on the way back and then I ate it really fast and went into a brief food coma. But I am up now. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do now. I might read some of Uprooted, but I do also, because I did get a fair amount done this afternoon, I think I might watch Damsel this evening. Because I've, I've been interested in watching that movie. It looks... Yeah, it's kind of fantasy-ish. I don't know. I feel like I haven't heard anybody talking about it actually, but it looks it looks quite cool. But anyway, I realized I don't think that I had explained what I'm doing for this essay. Um, so this is like, technically, I think it's technically the last week of break and then next week is week zero. Um, and my essay's due at the end of the week next week. But like, Trinity term's kind of weird because for a lot of the master's courses, people don't have any actual like contact hours, they don't have any actual classes going on, they just have to work on their dissertation, which isn't really the same situation for mine because we have our practicum this term as well. Again, don't, we're not going to be starting that in week zero. So not totally sure what that's going to look like yet, but I think a lot of it we can kind of just do on our own. They said there's one or two days a week where they're usually in Oxford or at the Taylorian and then it would be good if like we were there as well so that if we needed to speak to each other it's easy but the rest of the time we can kind of just do our own thing and figure out what works for us so that's really nice to have that kind of flexibility especially because we're working on our practicum at the same time but I've gotten off topic again my essay for this one it's my last essay for my elements class which is kind of like the kind of like core like theory class of like what is digital scholarship. Uh, we always had a guest come in and do a lecture and then we would do a reading seminar after about like our readings for the week and discussing the presentation that we just had about um, like different digital 
uh, projects that people were working on, kind of like different different things that you can do within the digital humanities. So for the essay, um, we're given a list of topics that we can choose from, and then we just have to do a 2,000 word essay. So the one that I chose was basically about what are the ethical implications of using social media data for research, um, which I think is really interesting, especially because I am doing that, I'm using social media data, and I know that we had a presentation from someone, and it was primarily talking about data sustainability, sustainability, um, and like storing your data and everything. But we had talked a little bit about mostly like storing social media data and everything. So I had asked like what are kind of like, and they touched briefly on, you know, there are a lot of like ethical implications of using social media data. And I said like, well, what's kind of like generally considered best practices within the field? Like, what do people sort of do? And he was like. Good question. There isn't really a clear answer. There isn't a consensus because social media has been around for a long time, but it's also fairly new. So there isn't like really a solid guide for it. And the things that I've been reading are kind of like, there is kind of, there is a basis, but a lot of it does kind of just come down to your discretion. So for example, like one of the articles I was reading or one of the studies I was reading, he used social media data, but he, and it was about like using social media uh, to see how people are engaging like with museums. So he like used, he took his own photos as examples of the types of photos that people would take in museums and post rather than using examples from the actual Instagram users whose like data he'd used uh, for the rest of the study, and he didn't include anybody's actual handles or anything so that there was still a level of anonymity to it. Um, but then other ones I've read, people do tag, people do um, just give users handles and speak very specifically about the videos that they posted and what they said in it. So I guess it kind of depends, and like the one where he hadn't used names, he was like, this was considered like quite low risk there, you know, because it's not like delving into controversial topics or yeah, anything that like is going to send someone to those users and like put, put them up, uh, like sort of expose those social media users content. But at the same time, yeah, you're using people's, sure they've posted it publicly, but maybe not with the intention that like this is where it's going to end up but it's also posted freely on the internet for anybody to see and really kind of use how they want. So there's kind of an interesting tension there between how much ownership do they actually have over this once it's been posted. And yeah, I think it's a really interesting question and it's relevant to my dissertation. So I'm glad that that was on the list of choices basically. But yeah, that's what I will be working on this week. So that's good. It was really nice to go to the library with Guy and Eloise. I don't know, it kind of just keeps you focused, especially when like it's in a library where you can't sit and chat because in the rad cam, it's just very quiet. Like you can like whisper to each other, but it's not a place where you're sort of like enabled to distract each other. And you know, they're both very wired in. So it kind of keeps you wired in, which is nice. So I'll probably do that again tomorrow because I think they're planning on spending like all week holed up in the rad cam. So we'll see. I might not be doing like 14 hour days in the library, but I will be back. everybody so I had a slightly rough morning this morning because I was supposed to go with Eloise and Gaia basically right when the rad cam opened to go find a seat and start working but I didn't fall asleep until after like 4 30 in the morning so I woke up and was like I'm going to sleep for a couple more hours and join you guys later so that's what I did and I'm about to head out and join them now which honestly for me is fine like I don't need to be there from when it opens until it closes. But yeah, tomorrow I'm determined to make it out at the same time as them. I don't know what it was. I, yeah, 
My, like, body was tired, but my brain was not. I did wind up watching Damsel. I thought it was good. It wasn't, like, anything special in terms of the story, but I thought it was, like, a fun movie. And I liked it more than I had anticipated. I thought that I was gonna be, like, either, like, this is fine or I was gonna hate it, but I thought it was quite fun. And, like, I thought the visual, the visuals were much better than I had been expecting, so I think it's worth a watch. But yeah, I'm about to head out to the rad cam now. again. I am back. Uh, we didn't actually stay at the library for a super long time. I mean, they were there longer because they got there at like nine o'clock. And then we, me and Gaia left around 3.30ish, was it? I'm not sure. Eloise left a little bit earlier to come back here and take a little break and then she's going to get back to studying. I will as well. I'm going to do some work at home here. And then I've also just been writing some reviews and stuff because after my mad dash readathon, I have a, some stuff to write about. It was a nice morning. I did get some work done on my essay, which was good. So yeah, then I popped by the grocery store and I picked up some mail. So my mom and I had watched um, Trini Woodall's video about uh, dressing like Iris Apfel, who is completely fabulous. And there was this, she used the Zara bag in one that was rose shaped. And we remember see, I remember seeing it when it was out and I absolutely loved it. So I was Googling it and it's gone, couldn't find it anywhere, but I found this one for 15 pounds on ASOS, so I was unable to resist. Is that not just the cutest thing you've ever seen in your life? So it's like a satin rose bag, it's got like a little clip and then also a crossbody strap or you can just wear it like that and it's hot pink. And like, how could you not for 15 pounds? So that's just a bit of pure happiness for me on a Tuesday. And then I also thought I'd try these because um, we were waiting. We've got like a couple of balls coming up and you can wear like gloves and tiaras and the whole shebang, They, which they said in the dress code. So I thought gloves would be cool. And everything that I could find was either kind of cheap looking or cost like $90, 90 pounds, which seemed excessive. So these were like 10 on ASOS, so I thought it would be worth trying. They're not like full on opera length gloves, which would have been cool. Um, ooh, I like them though. They said that they were bridal gloves, which makes sense, but I think they're cute. So I could probably wear them to one or both of the more black tie balls that I have coming up. They look quite silly with this blouse, but I think that that's pretty. It's just like another option. It's a fun thing to do. When else will I get to wear crazy gloves like this? So yeah, that's my little bit of retail therapy this afternoon. And now I'm going to change and get to typing. <laughs> so I made dinner earlier and I'm feeling exceptionally proud of myself because my family and friends who all watch these, this is going to laugh at me because I am not known as a cook. I have no interest in cooking. I'm not like, I mean, I've never killed anyone. I'm not like horrible at it. I've never made anything that was like fully inedible, but like I don't make that much stuff. So it's a, it's a small bar. It's a small like sample size, but since I've been here, there was one day where me and the girls were talking about steak. So I was like really, really craving steak. And it was one of those nights where I was unable to sleep that I periodically seemed to be having at Oxford. And for some reason, my like coping thing was watching a bunch of videos of people making steaks, including Gordon Ramsay. So then I was like, I can make a steak. How hard can it be? So since then I've made like two or three and I'm just saying I should probably be on Top Chef, like I'm a pro and that's what I did tonight. So I'm not gonna, obviously I did not show it because like I ate it and this, it wouldn't look appetizing because it's not like plated, but rest assured I'm, I should be a, a Top Chef. I should, I should be recruited for like a restaurant and I, I just thought I would share because I was feeling very smug. 
Good morning, everybody. So I actually slept last night, so we're off to a good start this morning. What did I do last night? I just kind of hung out and then went to bed. Yeah, didn't really do anything too exciting. But this morning, I'm once again heading out to study. It's actually morning this time, so I've cracked out to be one of the early people. It's just gonna be me and Eloise this morning, and we're going to go, she's in maths, so we're going to go to the Maths Institute to study this morning. Apparently there's a private room, and there's usually only ever like one person in there. So we're gonna go there today. Um, I don't think I'll, maybe, I'll maybe stay until like lunch or a little after lunch, and um, do some stuff there before I mosey my way somewhere else. Because I just find that I like to jump around more. But we'll we'll see how it's going there this morning anyway. I'm just continuing to work on my essay. That's really all I've got going on. And this is the outfit today since I want it to be spring. But it's been kind of chilly the last couple of days. I just wore that like thin blouse the other day and that was a mistake because it was very very windy and I was cold. again everybody so I don't think I really checked in yesterday after we were at the Maths Institute I was um, masquerading as someone who can do math and I studied with Eloise there for a little while and then we went and the Maths Institute is like quite a trek from here it's like half an hour walk ish so you wind up being like quite close to Jericho which is a part of town in Oxford that has a lot of like nice restaurants and cafes and everything and I don't spend a lot of time there because it is like quite a trek like it, it it takes quite a bit to make it like a special trip there I guess or like I mean not really but like kind of it's just not somewhere that's like on my typical path but we popped there to like this little Greek place for lunch we had wraps that were really really good um and then we both came back home and I did some work here for the afternoon, and then me, Eloise, and Gaia went for a walk through the Christchurch Meadows. So yeah, a nice, kind of chilled out day, and then this morning I have also been hanging around at home because I was getting some laundry done and also just doing work here. But now I think my laundry is almost done, so once it is finished I'm going to go collect it, and then I'd like just a change of scenery. So I think I'm going to head out to a library, maybe the old Bodleian, we'll see. So yeah, just for like a change of, a change of location is always nice. So it's a few hours later and I am, as you can see, I'm back home. I worked at uh, the old Bodleian in that lower reading room for a couple hours. It was a lot more busy than it usually is in there. Um, maybe it's just because I got there. I think I'm gone like after afternoon, like after 12 before and there's usually lots of seats and there, there were still seats available obviously because I sat down in there for a while. But yeah, usually it's not that full, like you can leave a few desks between you and someone else, but this time there was only, there was only one spot where it was like two spaces. So I sat down on the end and left one in between, but yeah, I guess it's coming up on exam season, so that makes sense. But yeah, I worked there for a few hours and then I just came back home and hung out for a bit and am doing some more work now. Um, yeah, just still plugging away at my essay, so. Good morning again, everybody. So this morning I've been chilling out here. I did a little bit of work this morning and just kind of tried to clean up a little bit. Um, so I've just been like puttering around. But now I'm about to head out to the rad cam because I'm meeting my study buddies again and hopefully going to get some more done this afternoon. But 
Yeah, I don't have any plans for this evening, but tomorrow I think we're going to uh, go to something that's happening at Pembroke. So that should be quite fun. Gonna head out to the rad camp. It's nice and sunny out today, though it does look a little bit windy, but the start of the week was not very nice weather, but the last couple of days have been very, very warm. So I'm hoping that that means that it's going to last now. <laughs> everybody so I am about to head out to go to Pembroke with my friends because we're gonna go look at um, this like glass art installation that Pembroke has on display right now so we're gonna see that it's in the hall um, I don't know how big it is so we're gonna do that and then I'm gonna go with Anika to the Taylorian to do some work today which will be cool because I have been to the Taylorian but I've never studied there so it'll be cool to check it out breaking it. <laughs> Um, I met, uh, like I said, Anika, Eloise, and Gaia to see the uh, art at Pembroke. So it was, yeah, like a stained glass exhibition. It had been in London and Paris, and now it's here, so that was quite cool. The main one was in the hall, but I think it was just too big to put the entire thing, so they put kind of like two of the end panels up in the chapel, and we couldn't figure out how to light it up, which was unfortunate, but still could like make out what it was and we saw the main portion which was very very pretty and then Anika and I went to Gloucester Green Market and had lunch so I had like it's like an open food market kind of thing I had this like sweet honey chicken thing which was good but I don't know if I would get it again because it was literally just like chicken with honey on it um so it's just like not the most flavorful but I would go back to that stall again I just might not get the same thing but that was just on my ordering, um, but yeah, it was good. And then we went and worked at the Taylorian for a little while. It was too full for us to work in like the nice, big, aesthetically pretty library, but we went and saw it and then worked in a kind of side room off of it uh, for a little while before she had to leave for dance. So I came back home and now I'm going to, I think, read some of Uprooted. So it's, it's a break from my essay, but it's like a productive break. It's a workaround. So as you have seen, I've been doing a whole bunch of work at home uh, today so far, 
but I just finished up what I was working on, so now I think I'm going to go for a bit of a walk. It's definitely colder today than it was yesterday. All week we've had, or the last couple days, we've had like 18 degrees. It's been really warm, but today it dropped back down to like 10. So it's still nice, but yeah, not quite as like hot as it was before. So I think I'm going to go on a bit of a walk and then I might go to Pembroke Library. We'll see how I feel after if I want to go there or just come back home to continue working. Um, so yeah, that is my plan for the today. Nothing too exciting going on. Um, just more like catching up, getting stuff done. I'm back in for my walk now and for the rest of the afternoon I'm really just gonna be doing work here so I think I'm going to say goodbye now so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one